Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm doing a presentation called, What is Man? And um, I've been teaching in Romans chapter 5. Last time, I kind of misquoted a verse, so I want to quote it right. It's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and of course, I should memorize this verse, but I'm not going to put any shoulds on myself. It's good to go ahead and just read what the scripture says. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, and that's the key, in Christ, <laughs> does it mean everybody in this whole world? It means only the ones that are in Christ. He is a new creature or a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's exactly what Romans 5 is talking about. Now, we're going to go to this chart number 10, which is uh, Romans 5. And like I said, if you're listening to me on the radio, you can write me at the liberating secret, uh, dot org and I will, or my email, Sylvia P at the liberating secret dot org. And you will be able, I will be able to send you one of these chart presentations and you'll be able to read along with us. But let me read it to you. Uh, it's, it's a chart called Romans 5, and it's really tell, it, it, it says two men are the procreators of two different races of beings. So the scripture I just read in 2 Corinthians 5 said that we're a new creation. Well, what's the old creation? The old creation is everybody that was in Adam. And as I read last time, everybody in Adam has sinned. <laughs> and uh, Paul brings that out. He, he has an argument there in chapter 5, and he says, because he says in verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Well, we know from other scriptures that without the law there is no sin, and Paul certainly brings that out in the next verse. So the progression is this, law, sin, death. So sin actually is broken law. So out of, from broken law, death. So where there is no law, there's no sin, there's no death, you see. But there was a law in the Garden of Eden with Adam. Adam had a law, and that law was thou shalt not eat. And it was so through his one broken law, death reigns upon all men. My goodness. So we're, we were all put into Adam and into his sinful nature. We were born with a sinful Adam nature. A lot of people call it Adamic nature. I just call it, it's a satanic nature actually, because it's Satan invading the human vessel that God created for his glory, to manifest his glory. Uh, Satan stole away and, um, and Romans chapter 3 says that all have sinned and come short of that glory. And then it says, in all, in, in, the only hope of our restoration is that Christ be in us, the only hope of glory. So God, to save the race, he had to bring his only begotten son to be man. To, you see, uh, animal sacrifices could no longer um, suffice. Because an, it takes a kind to deliver the, a kind. So it takes a human being like us. That's why Jesus says in, it says in Hebrews chapter 2 that he, he's not ashamed to call us his brother because he was made just like us. Why? Because he had to be what we are in, in, in our fallen state and then was made sin through the cross. Never, never, never did he ever personally commit sin. He was a pure and perfect sacrifice, but he was made sin. And through his death um, on the cross, he represented mankind. And so I love the verse in 2 Corinthians 5. Um, I think it's verse 18 or 19. It says, God the Father was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing our sins to us. Now, so the provision is provided for every person in the whole world. I mean, a lot of people that are into the false teaching of universalism are saying that because of these verses that sound so universal, that that means that everybody is automatically saved and everybody's automatically redeemed. That is not true. 
unless you receive to them that receives him, Jesus, you will have the power to be, become the son of God, even to them that believe on his name. So it's through receiving uh, the uh, re really the Jesus, the Holy Spirit within that is our salvation. And just having some kind of mental assent that everybody's okay. I mean, there was a book out a long time ago that's called You're Okay, I'm Okay. And um, it's, that's not true. And of course, that's the devil's big lie. He wants everybody to think that they're okay just the way they are in their fallen state without redemption because he knows the redeemed <laughs> are going to put an end to him. And actually, we're a part of casting him into the bottomless pit. So he certainly wants to thwart anybody realizing and knowing that it is through uh, the cross of Christ and through the provision that God has provided for every man that we can receive him. And as we receive him, it's not receiving some kind of mental assent. It's not just knowing some kind of truth. I can know a truth about history and that doesn't save me. It's not joining some church. Although, you know, if you, if the Lord leads you to join a fellowship, that's wonderful. It's not water baptism, even though the Lord, um, if, if, you know, you want to follow the Lord in baptism, that's wonderful. But it, that the act of being baptized does not save you. Just like Paul brings that out in Romans chapter four about Abraham, that he was justified and declared righteous by his faith and before God told him to be circumcised. So it's by faith we stand. It's always by faith. And uh, our whole salvation is from faith to faith to faith to faith. And we ha don't have anything else. And faith in the person of Christ and in the cross that has delivered us from sin, the power, the, the delivered us through the uh, blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin and the body of Christ cleanses us from the power of sin and the power that Satan might still have over us only because we haven't moved into the fullness of what God has said is true about us. So let me start. Let me just read to you what I say here on this chart in Romans chapter five. Two men are the procreators of two different races of beings. I love that. Old creation is one race. Another race of being is the new creation. Do you realize if you are saved and born again of God's spirit, you're another creation? You're a new race of being? Wow! Because the Holy Spirit of God has joined himself to your spirit. And that's what 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 17 says, that his spirit is joined to your spirit and he has brought you alive. He has declared you a son of God because his spirit has moved inside of you. And it says also in Romans 8, uh, if any man have uh, uh, the spirit of God, he quickens, that spirit quickens our mortal flesh. But it says, if any man does not have the spirit, he is not, any, he is not born again. Because that's what born again means, being born again of his Holy Spirit, which makes you a new race of being. Hallelujah. That is so great. I can hardly stand it. Okay, look at this chart. Adam, I've got Adam on one side, Christ on the other. I love to take a knife, a sword of the Spirit, and divide truth out exactly the way it's meant to be divided out. In, in Romans chapter 5, starting with verse 15 and going all the way to 21 chapter, first uh, verse 21 in chapter 5, says this. And so uh, as we read this, let me read this to you. The old creation in Adam. Let me read you this first. Through the old creation, we've all been made sinners. Through Christ and those that have received him, many are made righteous, are those who have received him. Those that are to as, therefore, to as many that are in Christ, they're the new creation. So to be in Christ means that you've received him and he is in you and you are in him. Okay, through, through Adam, uh, sin and death passed on all. So that's why we actually physically die. That's why we're declared sinners at the beginning. I don't care how good you've been your whole life. You were born a sinner and you will die a sinner unless, and, and die uh, an eternal death unless you receive the provision God has provided through the Lord Jesus Christ and the, and the provision at the cross. And through Christ, now life has passed on 
to all them that received him. That's resurrection life. That's the life of Christ has, has been imparted to us. Thank you, Jesus. Um, through Adam, death by an unra unrighteous act. That unrighteous act was that he disobeyed God. He rebelled against God. <laughs> In his rebellion, he thought he knew more than God and believed what Satan said. When Satan says, y you'll be as God and he he's going to make you wise like God. You see, he bit into that lie and believed it. And so therefore, the creation fell. The whole creation fell. And death by an unrighteous act. And that's, that's what broken law is. He broke that first law that God gave him. But through Christ, life, life comes by righteousness. So the life of Christ is our righteousness. Okay, through the first Adam, death reigned by sin. Okay, death and sin are bedfellows. <laughs> you can't have one without the other. If you have sin, you're going to have death. If you have death, you're going to have sin. So the very fact that everybody died after Adam sinned was the fact that everybody was born in Adam and have, have already sinned. I mean, the Bible in that Romans chapter 5 says that. So uh, death reigned by sin. And of course, sin really is a sense of self-reliance. And that's exactly what, a what Adam did. He was relying on what Satan was telling him in his mind, which he thought was really the truth which would be self-reliance. And so through that, then sin uh, reigns. And, but, it, but through Christ, life reigns by faith. See, we're meant to have the, uh, a reigning kingdom within us. I mean, Jesus said it in Luke. He says, the kingdom of, his, of God does not come by observation yet. It's going to come first within us. Okay, the kingdom of God is within us. Well, that kingdom is Christ within us. And he will reign in life. We're not meant to have life reigning over us. Uh, the Christian, if, if life is steamrolling you, you haven't entered into the fullness of what Christ has already done for you at Calvary. So, um, it, because we, whatever happens to us, if we can rightly see it through the eyes of, of a redemptive a redemptive purpose of whatever happens to you, you can see that all things will work together for your good. So, uh, but we can't really see that if we're so double-minded. I mean, James says the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and which is absolutely the truth. Okay, through the first man, Adam, judgment and condemnation. There is no way for man not to be in judgment. There is no way for man not to be guilty apart from Christ. You can try to justify yourself, try to justify your behavior all you want to, and, and even, um, even if you go around and you say positive things about yourself, maybe through uh, psychology or whatever, they teach you to say positive things about yourself, you will be guilty. You will not be able to get over that guilt until you come into Jesus Christ because He, the peace of Christ, only comes because you have received His sacrifice for our sins, which is His blood sacrifice. And so judgment and condemnation must come. And Jesus said, I did not come to judge, but I came to save you from that judgment. Because he says, man is already judged. He judges himself because he will not come into Christ. And why don't we come to Christ? Because the Bible says in John 3 that we love darkness more than we love the light. Because if you honestly come to the light and give God and give Jesus all your sins. He'll say, oh, my dear, don't you know that I've already paid the price for these sins and you're already set free without condemnation and guilt. You come into me and I'll free you from all that condemnation and guilt. That's what Christ has done. That's why it's good news. Okay, the first Adam, sin reigns unto eternal death. So um, uh, if you die a sinner, you're going to have eternal death. There is no life in you because you have chosen death over life. You have chosen your own way over, over God's way. Of, you have chosen uh, your own ideas of how to save yourself by, um, by even good works or, or just because you think that you're good enough or just because you think you're who you are. You see, uh, you've really chosen against 
God's way, which is the cross and the blood of Jesus. And, you know, I always say people don't go to hell because of their sins. They go to hell because we've all sinned. Go to hell because we won't take the provision of the precious blood of Jesus. But in Christ, righteousness reigns in life. So hallelujah. We have a reigning kingdom within. It's Jesus within. And he is Mr. Righteousness. And his life reigns in us in freedom and in truth, in understanding, in true understanding. Uh, in the old Adam, in the old man, or the old Adam, or the old creation, uh, we had a kingdom of Satan. We had a satanic kingdom. We were... We were right in his satanic kingdom. We had to be delivered from the powers of darkness. That's what uh, salvation is, being delivered from the powers of darkness. And actually, we're going to go into that next. And next time, I'm going to read to you all the scriptures that tell us how who we were before we were saved. You see, even Christians have a hard time taking this, that we actually were in Satan. We actually were in his kingdom. We were not in the kingdom of God we, just because you were born in a nation that's a Christian nation, just because you were born in a Christian family, does not automatically put you into the kingdom of God. You have to personally accept and, and take it by faith that Jesus has paid the price for your sins. And then um, in Adam, in the old Adam, we have an old marriage. Our old husband was Satan. Romans 7 is saying that. In the new in the new creation, in Christ, we have a new marriage. Our new husband is Christ. Hallelujah. We're joined to him. And uh, that, is, that is a magnificent thing to know that you are joined to Christ. And that's who you really are. It's, uh, it might not be who you think you are. It might not be what you feel to be. But if you're in Christ, you are really married to another husband you were you did have an old husband who was the uh, was satan within you and now through christ you have a new husband which is christ within you and i'm telling you he loves you satan hated you but he loves you now you're married to christ but sometimes we still hear from the old husband from the outside that's our problem so, I mean, I knew a man, um, my husband knew this man and introduced me to him. He was married, and then his first marriage didn't last, and he was divorced. And, uh, but the, he had two children by his first marriage. He, he was remarried to the second wife. Well, but he would never give up the control of his first wife. His first wife was still controlling him. And so as much as his second wife hated that and said, You've got to get freed from that. You see, that cannot work in a second marriage, I can tell you that. Well, Christ is more lenient than that. Christ gives us a space, knowing that we're still hearing from the calls of our old husband. We're not married to him, but we're still hearing from him. And sometimes we might slip out and have an affair or two, which, are, which would be sins. And we know that the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from any daily sin that we might do. But you see... When we really know we're joined to Christ and he has already overcome the evil one, he has overcome the power of the evil one and the evil one has power over us as long as we think we're independent, as long as we think we should re respond to the law, as long as we think we're separate, the evil one will have power over us. That's what we're going to go into in more depths. Okay, so we have old husband with Satan. Through, um, through the fall, and now the new husband is Christ through the new birth. Okay, the fruit of the old race is nothing but death. Now, I mean, man is trying to overcome death as hard as he can, apart from Christ. I mean, we hear of people being frozen, thinking that somewhere in time somebody will come up with new medicine or to, new technology to bring their bodies back to life. What a joke. What a joke. The, uh, this race, that old race of being is doomed. <laughs> so we've got to be a new creation because we're all doomed. And we're going to die. But if you're a new creation, you're going to be raised in Christ. And you're going to know the resurrection day will come. And you will come out of the grave. And you, you that will be uh, when Christ returns, when the dead shall be raised. And wow, we all look for that day. Uh, in Adam... Old independent self alive and bound to the law. 
in Christ, new unified self to Christ and dead to the law. Wow. Now this we're going to go into in depth. Right now, I'm just going to mention it. You see, as long as we think we're still an, the old and we are not, we've been delivered through the cross. But as long as we think we're still the old, we're going to think like Satan, which we're going to think separate. And we're going to think we should have the power to keep the law, to be good, to do the right thing. As long as we do that, then we're going to be bound to the law and Satan will still have power over us. But, however, if you can fully know that in the new creation, you are joined to Christ and he fulfills that law within us. He's the, somebody said, the only way for me to fulfill the law is to be married to the lawyer. And that's right. That is right. Jesus himself fulfills the whole law and he, and I'm joined to him. And I have to trust that to, to take care of all those um, uh, acts that are, and those behaviors that are not Christ. I have to trust the Holy Spirit's deliverance and he will do it. The Holy Spirit is my deliverer, uh, my present tense deliverer. And because the Bible says we have been delivered, that's once and for all at the cross. We will be delivered because finally our bodies will be uh, raptured at the very end and we're going to be uh, translated. Uh, our our um, uh, mortality be, will be swallowed up with immortality that will happen and uh, at, the, at the redemption of our body. But it says we are delivered. So daily we're delivered and simply because we're trusting in our union with Christ that I am in union with him and he's the, my keeper. You know what? When you're married to, I trust my husband, you see. My new husband is Christ and he is my keeper. Now, if I, I say to myself, I would commit any sin left to myself. If I think I'm just separate and just me, the powerless, helpless me trying to, Keep myself, for heaven's sakes, what pride we Christians think we have. If poor, helpless, pitiful me, we think we can keep ourselves. You put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You put your faith in the present tense Holy Spirit that delivers us daily by his resurrected life. And uh, you'll know your union with Christ when you take that leap of faith. We're going to fully go into that in fullness uh, because that's really what Romans uh, 5 through 8 is really about. We have an old identity, who I was before I was saved, but I have a brand new identity in Christ, who I am, and Christ is my life and my new, brand new identity. I no longer live. It's Christ living, and He is my new identity. Just like when I married my natural husband, I took His name. Now I take the name of my new husband, who keeps me, I'm a kept woman now because my new husband is keeping me. Hallelujah. When you know that, you're really free. And that's what I want you all to know. Okay. In the old Adam, we had the mind of the flesh, which is death, which is um, separate, independent, uh, self-willed, self-thinking. We were self-generated. We were never self-generated. We were always generated by another spirit. And that's what we're going to see in our next chart. But I'm not going to go to that because yet until we do the next program. And don't miss that next program because there's so many people that say to me, Sylvia, I can't believe that little babies, when they're born into the world, do they really, they don't have Satan in them. They don't have a satanic nature in them. Why, they're so sweet, and, and, and I'm not. I mean, when I held my little babies, I didn't think, oh my gosh, I've got a little devil. But it is the truth, I do. I mean, this little baby that I held in my arm needs to be born again of another spirit. It needs to have a new identity in Christ. That little baby needs its sins under the blood of Jesus. That little baby needs to trust in Jesus as Savior and Lord. And hallelujah, all of my children, I have four children, all four of them have, do know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they also know that Christ is their life. So I'm just so blessed to know that. But I tell you, the Lord caused me as an intercessor to stand in faith. They didn't know it for a long time. And they went through all kinds of problems. Because I said to the Lord early on in life, you know, I've known this truth for over 40 years. So uh, my oldest child is 53. So, so 
then when I first found the Lord, I said, I don't want my children just to sit on the front seat of the church and nod and agree with what everybody is saying and not know in their inner being who they really are and who and and who has paid the price for them, not only the blood of Jesus, but also know that the cross has totally delivered them from sin's dominion and that, th that they might know who they really are so that they can walk in freedom and not walk in some religious churchiosity spirit where, you know, I think I'm right because I go to church or I think I'm right because I do right things. I want them to know in their inner being that Christ is their life. And they did, did know that. I knew that was going to cost them everything to know that. It cost me everything to know this. This presentation did not come easy for my life. It cost me everything. It caused me everything I knew about myself to finally put my whole dependence on what God says is true about me. And it will cost you that. Our minds will not testify to it because we're still thinking from the mind of the flesh. Our outer circumstances will not testify to it. Even our behavior will not testify to it. But if God says it truth, when you, when you put your faith in it, in what God says is true, that the cross is enough, that what Christ has done is enough for you to deliver you from past and future and also from present tense uh, dominion of temptation and Satan's sins, that Christ is enough when you know that you're wholly dependent on Him. He wholly comes within you and lives your life perfectly and freely. And it's free. I mean, you live a freed life. Then you can be yourself. That you can be then you know you have the mind of Christ. Yeah, are you still tempted? Oh, yes, we're tempted all the time. Are we still assaulted by Satan? Oh, yes, our, our, our ministry is assaulted all the time. But we say, oh, praise the Lord. That proves to us that we must be on the right track. <laughs> that proves to us that uh, God is faithful and that only puts more strength and power in what we have to give out to the body of Christ. You see, so we count it all a privilege to whatever we might suffer with Satan's attacks. We count that a privilege that we might be able to bring you the full gospel of uh, the redeeming gospel of Christ that has delivered you wholly from sin's power, sin's um, uh, uh, penalty and power, and finally bodily deliverance. So. Thank you for joining me and come back next time because I want to, I'm going to read you all the verses where it says who we were before we were saved. I'm going to read you all those verses. So come back next time and may God richly bless you. Goodbye.